Hello, welcome back to my shop. I looked all over the internet for some information on this thing and couldn't find very much. But it's kind of an interesting thing to have. This is a uh, Yesu FC 757AT auto tuner. I got this off of eBay um, and it wasn't, wasn't expensive because it didn't really work very well. Kinda was bought to match this, which is my FC 757, FT 757, um, which was a basket case when I got it. It now works pretty well. Uh, it took a lot of work, but now it works. This thing sort of worked, but not really. If we look at the front of this, it basically it's got a dummy load built into it. Uh, for about 100 watts for a little bit. Uh, you can go through it without it being connected or into it and using it. Uh, that's the power button which stays on. It measures SWR and power both 15 and 150 watts. It has the input for two antennas uh, A and B Plus, it can be hooked up for up to four antennas on an antenna switcher that you can put out at your mast. It has plus or minus tuning um, for manually tuning it and load for manually loading it. Plus a manual up and down for your uh, different frequencies here, frequency ranges. Um, and a manual and automatic mode and a start button to start it it's auto tuning um, it does uh, 1.8 megs uh, 100, 100, 160 meters up through 10 meters uh, and it automatically knows when hooked up to the FT 757 what frequency band you're on it does this through a cable in the back and this little cable, I'll show you here. These are hard to find, and when you do, they're very expensive, and I don't really know why. This end has just got a 9-pin Molex plug. These you can get off of just about anywhere. They're a pretty standard plug. And this end has this little guy on it, which is a... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pin um, edge or connector that goes on circuit boards. You can get these for like a buck twenty nine at Digikey. <laughs> so it, it it isn't that big of a cable to build, but people are charging thirty bucks for them, and all you need is a piece of wire with what one shielded, I think. Yeah, no, no shielded, just eight wires. In other words, it probably worked just fine on a piece of Cat 5. Anyhow, and when you turn on your radio here, it comes on too. Now, the way this works, or it's supposed to work, is when you change channels or frequencies, uh, like right now, I'm on uh, 7 megahertz, so a 40 megahertz band, or 40 meter band. When I change bands, you'll be able to see these capacitors here and this switch do something. So let's go uh, up to 10 meg. You see it turn, and that turn. Well, that now it says on the front, it says it's on 10. Go back down. The switch turns, has to go a long way because it only goes one direction, okay, and now the capacitors go up and find the best match for whatever I'm in. Well, right now I'm on through because I'm going to a dummy load. What I'm going to show you is some of the problems with these things and how to fix them, at least the problems I've found. 
This one was got into, of course. There really isn't much on these as far as electronics goes. There's a uh, IC here, which is the brain box of the thing. It's a, what is it? It is a D750, 750, 7, 7507, 7507C uh, processor, and this one over here is a uh, C277, which is a um, dual comparator op amp, and this is a MC14016B. Um, switch. So that's about all, and a lot of a lot of little added stuff. But this handles all the stuff in it, and as you'll see, it's 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 kind of interesting. Pull this off. Down in here, you can see um, a bunch of gears, and uh, and a couple of motors, which are underneath there. The motors come up through these uh, screw gears, the pointing device. Uh, they come up through, the motors are in the bottom, they come up through the screw gears, the screw gears turn these. These turn with a reduction um, gear set. They turn the capacitors and they turn these resistors back here. There's resistors mounted on the back here and here. If you can see them, yeah, here and here. And they do that through um, through these connecting collets here. Well, one of the things that happens is these get gummy and they won't turn very easily and these get loose. Well, clean all that mess up, which I did, and you'll find that, that everything moves pretty well. We're going to go through how you actually set this thing up by the manual. Uh, Okay, so, first off, we'll, the, um, the, the manual or the instructions for it say that you are supposed to take these guys here, let's turn these so I can get to them. Oh, yeah, it doesn't tell you you have to have this little board grounded or it just won't work at all. Okay, let's turn these back to zero and as close to zero as it'll get. It's best if you can have these lined up on top because you're going to need them to be able to get to them. And what it says to do here is using a 1.5 hex wrench you loosen up these guys this is where you want them pointing towards the top if they're not already it's probably a good idea if you do <sighs> and then you drop everything down inside and you have to go fishing for it Alright, yeah. Alright, so basically you loosen these guys up. Here and here. Wow. Putting finger problems today. Now you want to loosen them on this side of the thing because um, if you don't you're going to be trying to turn these gears and those aren't going to turn. So what you do is you loosen those up and then you push both of these capacitors um, down to their zero 
where they're flat. And then you tighten them back up again. Okay. Don't over tighten them. This is just plastic, some sort of plastic in here. And as I'll show you in a minute, it might break. All right, so then you take these guys over here, loosen them up also. Fortunately, this one is off to the side. Of course it is. This is why you want these all standing straight up. Okay, like that. It wasn't on there real tight, so I'm not, not terrible about it. But, and you loosen this one up here, and that one up there. And you take these pots in the back, right here and you put them in their full looking from the back counterclockwise position and that one is not loose counterclockwise position so that they're all back to each other. Alright, so these are counterclockwise looking from the back. These are down in their zero positions. Now you can at this point tighten these back up them in place. It doesn't really matter where the gears are at this point. Don't worry about it. So, basically, I I did goof here. You don't, you don't loosen the inside one. You loosen the outside one because you don't want to try to turn again, turn those gears because they just won't. Alright, and here's what happened to me. When I got this thing, it really wouldn't tune correctly. I had to tune it manually, and it tuned really weird. The reason for that is, if you look real careful, this collet here is broken. What it was was this pot was dirty, and it wouldn't turn. So somebody decided, oh, well, I'll just tighten that down some more. Well, that's great, except for if you just tighten it down, these guys will break. Fortunately for me, it didn't break enough to make it unusable because it's got two on the side and now the pot turns well. I put some oil on it and it works great. So, alright, so now we've got, these guys are lined up to their full counterclockwise position. These are back down to zero. We can take this board and put him back down on here. And remember, you have to have ground on this thing or it just will not function. This it helps if you get the screw in the hole. Okay. So, we're just going to leave that one, one screw for now. That's fine. Okay, now. According to the instructions for this thing. Turn it on. And what you do, it says, to start off, you have a the computer set up so that you put it in CW mode, or the transmitter. You put it in CW mode, make it about 100 watts by the, the meter on your whatever meter you happen to have available. 
things in reflected. There we go. And it says to connect the inline watt meter 50 ohms to the antenna jack. Uh, press the antenna A button, which I'm on, connected to A. Uh, press the through switch, which I want to, go straight to the dummy load. Uh, adjust the transmitter for 100 watts, which it should probably be, real close it is. Um, and you adjust, you find your screwdriver first. Oh, here it is. And you look at the front meter over here. And you adjust it for, let's see if we can get a picture of this. Um, yeah, we'll do it this way. Okay. So, see if I can get this. So, you, you want to do this quickly. Basically, you adjust in SWR, you adjust for minimum SWR going into a non reactive 50 ohm dummy load. Let's see if I can hold this thing here. This is kind of tricky. Okay, I'm in SWR, I'm on 100 watts. Okay, so. There's my 100 watts on SW low on 100 volt or 100 watts is pretty close pretty close to zero. It's there's not much there. Yeah, and my power is right at 100 watts. All right, so that's the first step. Uh, we've got that, and it says you have to repeat this step several times, and you do. Uh, so, and for the power output meter, basically you put it in, uh, you put it to 150 or 100 watts and you adjust VR104, which is VR04, you adjust this for 100 watts. See if I can. Boy, the glare is just terrible here. So, VR 104 for 100 watts. That's 100 watts. Okay. So, I got that. Then you take it down to approximately 15 watts on your meter, which the meter on this thing is right about there. And I want 10 watts, which, I don't know if you can see it, I have, well, it says 10 watts. Okay, so that's good. So both of our, our high and low on the meter are correct. All right, so VR104, that adjusted my voltage or my wattage out for 15 and uh, 100, or 10 and 100, uh, bypassing this and going straight through to the power uh, to my dummy load, which is over here. Now, we got the next step is to set the SWR calibration. <laughs> so, I think maybe my transmitter is messing up my, my uh, videos here. Okay, so we have that done. We have now we have to do the SWR, and the SWR is done on both uh, 10 and 100 watts. It says to preset VR101, which is this one, uh, to fully counterclockwise, and VR102, which is uh, this one fully counterclockwise fully clockwise so this one goes counter or bleh. this one goes counterclockwise this one goes clockwise um, oh I forgot completely forgot about this I can't do this one the right way 
I have to do this on 15 watts, but it, it, it works. I'm not worried about it. I have here a little handmade 17 and a half watt dummy load, which is going to give you a three, an SWR of three to one, which is the whole point. So what you do, is take this thing down to turn a little bit okay so I'm on SWR now what I want to do is I want to do 102 to the point where it just shows 3 to 1 SWR there we go, 3 to 1 SWR. Okay. Right, so basically I'm putting out about 15 watts, and that's what happens. Ha! Ah! Even with 15 watts. Bubble those bubbies up. Okay. <laughs> well, we can do this quickly here. Got to get bigger resistors for this. That's just stupid. Okay, so basically, it should show a 3 to 1 SWR. Probably a little less now, or a little more now because of the uh, burnt resistors, but we'll take it. There's a 3 to 1 SWR. Sorry about the video being shaky and or uh, out of focus, but it's the best I could do it. I have to hurry. All right, so now we've got the SWR set to three to one, and some rather charcoal um, <laughs> resistors. <laughs> love it. Okay, mm, I love the smell of burnt electronics in the morning. All right, let's put this back together. There we go. All right, we're back together. All right, so now I should show zero. Okay, so our as high as WR is set to three to one, and now we um, you go on to the variable capacitor presetting, which is what we did over here. We preset the variable variable capacitors. We've got them all down to their points where they need to be, and the resistors inside. Now, what we want to do is we want to press the forward tune button all right there we go now if you watch this capacitor what it says to do after you have gone through all that and reset everybody back to the zero you push this and see how far around it goes and where it stops it's not stopping and it'll probably come back to there all right now what this means if I take this and I go, what, is, what it's doing is it's not sensing the fact that this resistor has gotten to the end. It's stopping way over there. And way over there. Okay. Now, this is interesting. It shouldn't be doing that. Is that hmm this is interesting when I put my resistors in did I put them all the way back like you're supposed to I don't know let's see
<laughs> okay. That's where that goes. So we've got to How in the world did I do that? I gotta get this so I can get to it now again. It's on the wrong side. It's kind of a pain in the neck. All right. So, loosen that up a little bit. Okay, so now it is definitely zeroed out. supposed to be. I didn't set anything else there. Okay. <sighs> I must not have set these back at, like I thought I did. I'm almost positive I did. <laughs> well... Let's loosen this up again and push you back down to there which is where you belong I must not have had them set correctly because what it does is it takes a voltage off of this pot here and it tells the processor hey I'm at the end of my travel so Let's see if it works this time. I've got it zeroed back here. Now we push this and it should go to minimum capacitance or basically open. It did. So it's all the way open and it stopped. And then you take it and it goes all the way back and it stops. And the same thing with your load which is over here. It goes from there to there. We know our stops are in the right spots. We know our resistors are in the right spots because the things stop where, where they're supposed to. So, got that straightened out. Basically, that's it as far as those go. Um, I know, clear as mud, right? Sorry about that. I really didn't... I thought I had them turned to the right spot, but I guess not. <sighs> So screw this guy back down. Alright, so we're back down. Now, what it says to do is you turn it on, you put it in manual, you hit the tune up button and you watch this and see where it goes and when it stops. If it does not stop in the right spot, which is just a tiny shade past it, what you do is you go to um, VR105, which is this six, five, right there. This is VR105. You go to this one and you Tweak it just a little bit. Go back. See where it stops. And then bring it forward again and see where it stops. Went a little too far, so I need to back it off more. So we go back. To zero. And then forward to stop. That's exactly the way it's supposed to be. Alright, and then you do the same thing for the tune side. You push the tune up button and see where it stops 
And the tune one is um, VR 106, which is this one here. So you back it up. All right, show you this closely here, if I can get this camera to work for any length of time. So basically, you see this comes fully unmeshes and stops, and fully meshes and stops. Well, you wanna tweak this just a little bit and we'll show you what happens. It goes around and it's not quite there. <laughs> Stupid. Disconnected again. Give it to reconnect. All right, let's see if we can. The heck with that camera. Let's see if we can uh, get this one to come in a little bit. All right, so basically, what we want to see is when I push this forward button, I want to see this capacitor fully mesh if you look right there see it's not fully meshed so what I want to do is adjust VR 106 back it up a little bit or one way or the other and just a shade more And bring it back and bring it forward. Just the tiniest bit more. That is dead flat over there. And that is now fully unmeshed. So let's take a look at this guy. We'll push this button. This is your tune. The other one was load. Now this one, if you can see, is fully meshed. And bring it back. Fully unmeshed. We're fully meshed here. So, these two are tuned up. Um, and it's all, everybody is set up. All of these are set up. The only other thing you've got in here is There's a battery here. This battery is for the backup, to hold the backup of this chip. What this thing will do is when you um, set or find a good spot on your antenna or whatever, you know, the antenna you're using for each of your bands, when you switch frequencies um, on your transmitter, it will first of all go and look and see if it has a stored um, position for everything in here. If it does, it'll just go there. If it doesn't, it'll start to seek. Now the thing about this is it does not require that you be transmitting into it. It will seek on receive. Uh, it's got, I guess, it's, I don't know how it, it works. It's, it, I didn't, I haven't looked that up. But it, it'll seek on receive and get you close. When you transmit, it will then try to do a little better and see if it can get you get you close to um, as low an SWR as possible. So what we'll sh what we'll do here we'll take this camera and we'll do uh
zoom back out again so I can get a whole picture. All right. So what we're going to do, or attempt to do, is I am now on 7.2534, whatever. Um, don't really care. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it up to 10 megahertz. Nothing happened. Well, the reason nothing happened is because I'm in manual right here. So let's go back down to 7. We'll put, take this out of manual. And we'll go up to 10. You see the lights come on. And notice that it was on 10, 10 megahertz over here. And it flashed over and it went back to ready. If I go back down to 7, it takes a long time for the thing to come around. And it says, okay, that's where, you, you know, where I was. Well, if you look here, if you can see them, it's hard to do this. They're not fully meshed. They are in the positions that I left them with my antenna. Because I had this set up on an antenna before. And it will remember where it was set up last. If I push start right now. I am going into a dummy load up there. So let's press start. I'm on uh, uh, 40 meters. Press the start, and you can see them, what they're doing. They go around, goes all the way back, comes around. It'll go all the way back. This is finding the whole range of what it can see on both tune and load. Now this one will come around. And it should go back and, and stop. It did. And then this one will come around. And it should go back and stop also. At zero. And it did. And my ready light is on here. That's because I'm going into a good dummy load with 50 ohm impedance. If I was going into an antenna, those things would be where they were. Let's find one that is stored for, oh, I don't know, uh, there's 20 meters. On 20 meters, and it says it's ready, and there are my, my capacitors. This is my tune, and this is the load, it's over here. That would be set up for my antenna that I've got outside. Anyway, that's how this thing works and how to tune it up, and how to fix it, or at least the busted parts of it. Um, and they're, it's mostly mechanical. Anyway, I hope you understood all that, and I'll try to do the best I can in post with all the cameras dying on me. Uh, but Okay, we're going to give this a shot. Um, this is after I put the whole thing back together again and back on the shelf. Um, we're going to um, tune it to, right now we got it at 725, whatever. It doesn't really matter what frequency you're on now because it's just going to do this by receive. We're going to turn this to, it is on automatic, not manual. It is not through, it's not on the dummy load. Uh, I've got the sensitivity for the SWR set about three quarters of the way, which is, I find that works best. <coughs> And we're going to we're on antenna A, which is connected to my antenna outside. And we're going to hit start. Now, what this does is it goes around and it searches back and forth. If you watch the meter up here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's going to there it goes down, back up. It'll search down. I got a nine noise level. Well, see now it's down on seven back up to nine as it's doing its stuff with its capacitors in there it's going to search for what it thinks is the best SWR and it thinks it's about the best SWR so let's find out if I'm right here um, we'll put this on power out put it on 15 watts take this guy put him on AM and give him just just a few watts out. There's like four watts out. Okay. Put it on SWR, and it is less than 1.5 to one. 
Now if I hit the start again with 5 watts going out, see what it can do. Ah, there it goes. It's down, 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 up, up. It's going up and down and up and down, back and forth. And when this light goes off, it found the best place it can, which is about 1.2 or one less than 1.2 to 1. Uh, I'm happy with that. So this works. Now let's go up, take it up to 10 megahertz. See the light come on over there. It knows it's on 10. It's waiting. It's getting back to where it was. I've got a at least a 9 noise level. Uh, make sure I'm in band here. Even though I'm not putting out any kind of power. Like a couple of watts. So what do I want? 10 point... Uh, where is it? Hello? 10. 10 100 to 10 150, 10 130. That's good. Make sure to put my power back out. 15 watts. On the end. Yeah, we're about about 5 watts maybe. Um, and let's uh, do my transmit on SWR. It's it's great. It found that SWR and receive. It's way down there, about point, one point nothing. So that's how it works. And every time you now that now that they are programmed in there, when I change bands, I don't have to wait for it. It'll just go right there because it knows that that was the best match. Now we did 14 on the bench into a dummy load. Let's find out what this does. Uh, Let's go to the middle of the band, about 14, no, I don't know, 14 to 24. Um, about 5 watts out. Yeah, 3 to 5 watts. So that, 3 watts. Not going to hurt anybody. Um, and let it search and find. Now, my antenna is terrible on, four, on uh, 20 meters. We'll see what it comes up with. It's way up over 3 at this point. I got an end fed long wire basically and it does not like 20 meters. And no, it doesn't like 20 meters. Now, if it doesn't like it, what you can do is you can hit the manual button, turn your sensitivity down, and see if you can get it to do any better by yourself. And see, I can't, the load has no effect. So, no, I can't get better than 3 to 1. So, it was right. I put up outside antennas if I need for for 20 meters. So, uh, go back down to 10. Well, let's see, go to 14. Turn it back on to automatic. Turn my sensitivity up. This is pretty much where you leave it. Um, go down to 10, and it'll find its way from what it remembered. The, t the lag time is actually going through... Uh, all the switch positions because it, the switch only goes one way so if you're on low it has to go all the way around and back up again um, that's interesting why did you keep working okay um, so back down to seven here it goes it'll find it's on seven through the data chunk in the back it's on seven it says where did I used to be oh that's where I used to be and I'm done that's all there is to it. So, there it is. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching.